Russia, Iran, and Turkey are building an alliance. Where is this going? Welcome to the program today. My name is Manu Gonzalez. I'm here in studio with Bill Salas, and we are discussing this exact topic of Russia, Iran, and Turkey joining together in an alliance. Welcome, Bill. Hey, Manu, it's great to be with you. You know, you're absolutely right. We're watching this uh, with a very close eye, dealing with that Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy. We have three of the top countries leading that charge, that, that Magog invaders coming into Israel, and would include Russia, Turkey and Iran, and we're seeing them build alliances stronger than ever before. Uh, strange bedfellows, you know, communist Russia, Islamic countries with Turkey and Iran, and yet for some reason, they're coming together, and that to me is leading toward the fulfillment of the Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy. It is so fascinating to look at, really even the last 20, 25 years, in watching uh, Turkey uh, morph into a very Muslim country. It's always been Muslim, certainly since the uh, world, end of World War I. But they, they became very Western. And so to, to read Ezekiel, to read the players, which we'll talk about in more detail. But here we have a picture and a video of these exact three guys coming together uh, with these agreements and these alliances, really in, in a very much a posture of, of being anti-Israel. But if you don't mind, bef before we do that, uh, for, those that, for those of you that might not be aware of really this tremendous prophecy in Ezekiel 38 and 39, let's take a moment to give some context. It's always important in interpreting the Bible to provide some context. What do we see in Ezekiel 36 and 37 as it builds up into this, all of a sudden, these major players in chapter 38? Right. Ezekiel 36 uh, is a key passage if you want to read 30, uh, Ezekiel 36, 22 through 24. Absolutely. It says, therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nation, nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned, profaned among the nations and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. Right, so there's the context right there. He, uh, Ezekiel is talking about God is going to, out of the diaspora of 1878 years, we see the Jews have come back in the land in 1948. They had left the land in 70 AD. God said that was going to happen. Israel today is not an accident of history. It is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. God is bringing them back in the land because he has a covenant to keep that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on through the 12 tribes of Israel, on through down to the Jewish people. It's an unconditional covenant. He's bringing them back in the land. He's going to let the world know he's the covenant-keeping God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to put the world on official notice in this Ezekiel 38 prophecy, and it requires the Jews to be back in the land. So uh, this is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And when, then when you go in contextually, you have Ezekiel 37. Just give them a brief overview yeah. of the dry bones, and I'll tell them mm -hmm. why that's significant. Yeah, when, when we look at what the way that it's written here, and may, maybe you're watching, uh, maybe this is new to you, but this is very consistent. It builds one chapter upon another. And in chapter 37, God gives this vision of the dry bones of them uh, coming back as, a, as a, some bones, then there's flesh on them. And, it, and it's a vision that, that God gives to Ezekiel about the latter days, and we'll see that in a moment as well. But uh, why, uh, why is this theologically significant, especially for our audience who might not be fully aware of everything? Right, because when we get into Ezekiel 37, on the heels of God saying in Ezekiel 36 that I will bring the Jews back into the land, he then explains the time, the condition they will be in when he brings mm -hmm. them back in the land. So we see another prophecy which has been fulfilled. So with the dry bones, very dry bones, a valley that Ezekiel sees, he was escorted, in my estimation, forward into the World War I, with the whole, World War II rather, with the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. and he sees these dry bones. And, and what we find out right there that the metric of time is summed up in the condition of the Jews. The metric of time meaning 
How long would the Jews been in the diaspora? We didn't know. Mm -hmm. But he says when, when you see them in a condition, in this kind of desperate dry bones condition, and they say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off, that's when I, he says, I will bring you back into the land of Israel at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So we see that they were in that condition and, and during the Holocaust. And then after the World War II, the Jews come back into the land. It is a fulfillment of prophecy. It's a sovereign act. No, no ethnic group has ever been able to, after 400 years outside of their country, maintain its ethnical identity and be brought back into their homeland. So this is an amazing miracle, not an accident of history. So it's important when we think about this, God does this, as is mentioned in Isaiah 46 and Isaiah 44, God is the only one. Uh, in fact, he, he asks the, the other ones, bring your gods, bring your gods over, and I will declare the end from the beginning. God is the only one that knows the future, and he puts this in here to show that this is his word, to show that he's a God that keeps his covenants. So as we continue to go on, um, as we transition into 38, we only have a little bit of time today in the program, but uh, let's talk about the players, because there's, there is a consensus about the players, mm -hmm. about all the names, and we want to say as we get into this, um, that these are names that Ezekiel is using uh, roughly in you know, 2,600 years ago, 600 B.C., he's, he's speaking about these nations and these lands, uh, these ethnic groups, of, in the ways that he knows them then. So our job as scholars and, and researchers is to look them up and say, who is he talking about? And so what are the modern equivalents to what we see? When you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, you do not allegorize it. These details can be read literally. Almost every aspect of Ezekiel 38 and 39 can be read literally. It's a prophecy that I think God has given us so much detail in because it's a major event. We'll explain why he, it's a major event in this program. But so remember, we're taking this prophecy very literally. We're not allegorizing it. Now, who is involved in this? Uh, we would say that basically that you see a map up here by the ancient names Ezekiel talked about with Magog and Rosh and Meshech and Tubal and Togarma, etc. Those won't make a lot of sense to you presently because now we have their modern day equivalents, which would be probably including Russia. And this is a general consensus, yep. like you said, from your top scholars, uh, including some of the southern steppes, breakaway uh, countries of the former. Uh, you've got Turkey, clearly Turkey's in there, Iran. Uh, Persia, under the, right? Under the banner of Persia. In 1935, they changed their name to Iran. Uh, Ethiopia and Sudan, probably in there. Sudan, uh, Somalia and Libya. Algeria, Tamar Morocco and Tunisia and Morocco is sort of a maybe in there, but mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll throw them in there for this map. They actually form an outer ring around Israel. None of those countries share common borders with Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, they've never actually been Israel's notorious enemies in the past, but they will come against Israel in this coalition. So you see that there's an outer circle there. In contrast to, just real quickly before we get into the next segment, an inner ring that I, I found in Psalm 83 that shares common borders with Israel. None of these countries are listed in Ezekiel mm -hmm. 38. So we have two distinct different circles we're looking mm -hmm. at here of, of spheres of, of uh, lines of force. And so these are the ancient enemies of Israel in this inner circle. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that because that would actually take us into another mm -hmm. topic on Psalm 83. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to bring that forward so we can make the comparison between... It's interesting that none of these countries in the outer ring have ever been Israel's enemies. Now, most of them are Muslim. So keep that in mind. Uh, I was going to say, what brings these people together is a religion. And, and Ezekiel's in 600 you know, BC. We know that Islam was founded 632 AD. And how did he know? <laughs> how did he know, Bill, that right. all these nations were going to be joined together, really apart from Russia specifically, but all the southern, all the stand countries, they're very uh, Muslim oriented. Yeah, so absolutely. we have this religious system of, of being antagonistic, certainly towards Israel. Right. So you can see that they... You know, they don't really like Israel anyways. It's, you know, the Islamic faith, uh, I won't get into the whole thing and that sort of thing, but in other words, they're going to be okay. You know, Russia, okay, we're going to go into Israel, and, and you'll explain why for plunder and booty and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you're right, that is sort of a common feature among these belligerents. When we think about, uh, as well, I'd love to discuss the, the circumstances. Uh, we see in Ezekiel 38, chapter 38, in the sense of the timing, Ezekiel says in the latter years, in the latter days, uh, these characters, these, these alliance of nations are going to come into the mountains of Israel. They're going to come back from the north. Uh, and, but it, there's descriptions that are made, which is really unique. And it's a description of Israel dwelling securely, um, 
they are, the, the imagery that we have is that um, God says that Gog, this leader, is going to be coming in for spoil. Uh, we also have Sheba and Dedan, another uh, group of players, are g- providing a protest. Let's kind of Let's kind of wrap that all up into one nutshell as quickly as we can, because there's a lot here, as we know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's interesting because you just read who the participants were in Ezekiel 38, 1 through 6. Ezekiel 38, 7 through 12 gets into the conditions Israel exists in in the latter years, which tips us off. And right now, you and I would say we live in the latter years. Is yeah, that correct? In a land that was waste. It was wasted for 1,870 years. That's right. You know, it's continual waste, uninhabited, but it's not, it's very inhabited now. Yeah, some of the details that were given in those verses, they'll be regathered from the nations. Mm-hmm. That's happened in the latter years. They'll be brought back from the sword of persecution, Israel, to the land of Israel, which had long been desolate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we would say that's been, that's been happening over the last 73 years now as we sit here in 2021, time stamping this. But there's some other conditions that I don't think are quite in place yet. They're talking about there'll be a peaceful people living in a land of unwalled villages, dwelling securely without walls, bars, nor gates, having silver and gold and acquired livestock and goods, possessing booty and great plunder. Because we find out in Ezekiel 38, verse 13, when the protesters launch mm-hmm. their protest, they give us a hint to that motive. Are you coming for plunder and great mm-hmm. booty? That sort of thing. Now, Israel has walls around all of its borders. There's a big partition wall, 403 miles long through Israel proper, keeping Palestinian terrorism out of Israel proper. Uh, For various reasons, I I point out in several of my works, Psalm 83 Mm -hmm. books and now prophecies, uh, I don't believe Israel is meeting these conditions Mm -hmm. just yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, but basically when they do, this prophecy will find fulfillment and we see it stage setting presently. Bill, this is where we recognize that God is a covenant-keeping God all through Ezekiel 38 and 39. And, you know, it's a good segue for us because, you know, one of the things um, we do here at the the ministry is to uh, share articles about God's faithfulness in our magazine. So we're going to take a little break so you can see how you can get that. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bob Ulrich, Gary Stearman's partner and the co-founder of Prophecy Watchers. I would love to tell you how you can become a subscriber to our wonderful Prophecy magazine creatively named The Prophecy Watcher. And ready for this? How you can get eight powerful prophecy DVDs as a free bonus for subscribing today. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Do you recognize the signs of the times? Pandemics, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, the rise of artificial intelligence, the march towards globalism, and the mark of the beast, rumors of a global monetary reset, wars and rumors of wars, all the things that were prophesied in the Bible over 2,500 years ago. Truthfully, it gets harder and harder to keep up with all the fulfillments of scripture, and that's where we come in. We like to call our ministry the place you go to hear things you'll probably never hear in church. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a -a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today for your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers. You can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value, but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen 
or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Really hope that you uh, look into getting the magazine because we cover so many wonderful topics here from a variety of scholars. And, you know, Bill, as we come to the end of this program, uh, we are, are recognizing and seeing the way that God is faithful and we see these hordes uh, coming down from the north. And the question is, is, is this really a miracle? Can we, can we show that it's truly from God? Is this going to be a sort of a guesswork? Um, are people going to wonder how come this invasion came, how it was stopped? No, that won't be the case. God is intentionally going to take this event and he's going to stop it supernaturally. He's going to stop it with a great earthquake. That earthquake is going to cause panic among the troops. It says every man's sword will be against his brother. There'll be confusion. Remember, they speak different languages. Now they're, now they're killing each other in this invasion. Uh, there's going to be uh, f uh, flooding rain. There's going to be hailstones, huge hailstones pumbling these troops. What marksmanship this is going to be mm -hmm. is not, not coming against the Israelis. Only God's signature is on that. Okay, So the world's going to go at that point. They're going to sit back and marvel and go, oh my goodness, the God of the Jews. And that's what, that's what the, the understanding, I believe, will be, the perception. You know, it reminds me of a few years ago when Russia was amassing troops near Crimea. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't happen overnight. They started building more and more, and people are talking, and, and, and then you have the pundits going, what are they doing building up their troops? And you can see it growing and growing, and everybody's waiting and wondering. And it's no different than you go back to the, the 67 war, where Egypt is building troops, and they're building tanks over on the border. And so this happens over weeks, maybe, maybe even months as it builds up. And, of course, in that time, it reminds me of the United Nations, you know, as people are there videoing, and this country's coming up, and we want to protest what's going on, and, and, and what's Russia doing, and if they do this, you know, um, they're going to get some sanctions, and so you have this back and forth, but it, it's going to build up to a point where Israel, uh, with their 175,000 army, you know, maybe a little bit more, versus, uh, you know, 10 times or more, maybe 20 times the amount, they're watching this amassing going on because it, it, it describes the hordes, the hordes coming in a great cloud. God says this. They're outnumbered, outmaneuvered, um, outmanned, out technological with, with Russia being at the lead. And yet God wants it that way. And initially Israel doesn't realize God's going to intervene. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be getting their Iron Dome out and they're going to be probably polishing off their nuclear weapons, you know, they're going to they're going to think they've got to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. But God's going to say back off. The earthquake will be the notification and then these things are going to happen. And the amassing of the troops is I think it's going to take a little time to mobilize all these different countries, yeah. get them ready to come down. And I think that unlike Crimea, which Russia took over Crimea without really firing a shot, yeah, they did. They're not going to have the same success in this scenario obviously. And it even says, as we close out Ezekiel 38, it talks about there'll be fire hitting in the, the coastlands and on Magog. And so, so in other words, the battle actually goes out beyond the, the nation of Israel. The coastlands would probably represent the coastlands of the belligerent countries being involved. Coastlands tend to biblically mean remoter, outer parts of the globe. So in, in Magog, we would say, is more than likely with the Russia or the breakaway Soviet Republic countries. The actual land. I mean, we're talking about... When we talk about Magog, we're talking about the land of Russia, you know, South Russia in there. And God says, um, after the earthquake and everything and, and the fire and everything else, he says, I'm going to send fire on the coastlands. Right. And so God goes out of his way. Um, again, it reminds me of, of Gideon and God telling him, you got too many people. You know, I don't, I don't want you to get the glory on this. And I, I get rid of some people because we, we'll bring it down to 300. And then you can see the way that God wins that battle with confusion um, and God gets the glory. In the same way here, Israel, l let's talk for a moment. Israel comes to the point here of recognizing in a supernatural way 
God's presence. I mean, right now, some of you might not even know this, but in Israel today, 80% of them are secular. They're not going to temple each week. They're not going to synagogue. There's 20% religious. But do you think this is going to change that? Well, it does seem to say that. So after God stops this supernaturally in Ezekiel 38, you know, as we're reading from 14 on to like 28 Mm -hmm. or something, uh, when it's all done, it'll be clear it was supernatural. It'll be clear that God's fingerprints were all over it. And in Ezekiel 39, 7, and we're going to do another program on Ezekiel 39 because Mm -hmm. there's so much details about what even happens in the aftermath Mm -hmm. where we do see evidences of Israel actually recognizing the God Jehovah, the God of Moses, not not necessarily jumping on the Jesus train, per se, at that point of the bandwagon. But here's what it says in Ezekiel 9, 37, give you a preview of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, It says, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. The nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. This is going to require the people of Israel, the midst of my, and he's called my people of Israel, the chosen people of the Abrahamic covenant. And I am the Holy One in Israel requires the land to be in existence, not captured by uh, anybody. And that, that's the promised land of the Abrahamic covenant. He was promised a chosen people and a promised land for those chosen people who'd be made a great nation in Genesis chapter 12. So the point is, what we're trying to say, and as we close out, we'll we'll sort of reach out to you folks here. Um, God wants the world to know that he's God, and he keeps his covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was unconditional covenants. And he's a promise keeper for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, right, Wando? So the point being is that this is the big marquee event where he's going to say, look, here I am. I am God. You know, I'm putting my name back in front of all of you. My holy name. You know, it's been forgotten. It's going to be right back in living color right in front of you in this event. As you, as you watch this and you, you think about the upcoming events, you know, God's heart, God's desire is to reach the world. He's not willing that any should perish. And so this is the time when, when he really overcomes, really what, when we look out of the world, there's a lot of, of atheism. There's a lot of people that are just not interested in, in what God is, or, or they dismiss him. Really, in our scientific age, there's no room for God. We've kicked him out of our country. We've kicked him out of the academics in, in a variety of other ways. You know, we have evolutionary thought just, you know, really systemic everywhere. There's no room for God. And God has, you know, reaches people. We know that God is always active through the power of the Holy Spirit, especially through the gospel. You know, spend a moment here to, to uh, really the last couple of minutes in, in, for the audience that God seeks to break that. He, he seems to shatter that with this. Right, because this event happens in the latter years. Mm-hmm. So it's a last day's prophecy. Uh, we do believe we're on the last, the, pretty much toward the end of the end times timeline. And this event is looming to happen real soon. So uh, when this event happens... And I believe it's going to happen, and this is kind of a, a key to the timing, perhaps. Mm-hmm. God wants to give the world official notice of who he is and his, how holy his name is at the right time. I think God wants the world to know, look, I want you, you're going to have two choices. One's about to come on the horizon here. I want to let you know I'm here. Choose me, because what's coming around the corner here, and that, the Santa Christ is going to come forward. He's going to cause people to worship him in the midpoint of the tribulation, take his mark where no one can buy or sell, Let's have a mark upon their right hand or upon their forehead. Now, this We're getting into the critical juncture of the end times at this point in time. So I think God is going to take this event. It's going to be clear that it was God. It's, it's going to be clear that it was foretold by Ezekiel in chapters 38 and 39. He's going to say, here I am. Choose me because something's coming around the corner here. And if, you, if, this, if this whole topic interests you, uh, Bill and I spent three hours going line by line, verse by verse, charts, graphs, uh, setting the background in a full DVD set, because we know that this is one of the things that's upcoming on the, 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 really the prophetic horizon, and we want people to be ready. Why? Well, number one, to know the truth, but secondly, to use this as an opportunity to share the gospel you know, with so many others, and so we spent the time uh, to bring this all together, and so we're going to take a minute right now and, and show you about all the things that we've done in, in this DVD set. Our ministry enjoys bringing you Bible prophecy experts from all over the world to share their biblical expertise with you. Our longtime friend Bill Salas certainly fits that description. Bill has spent the last 10 years studying and writing about a series of wars that will one day engulf the entire Middle East. You won't find a bigger expert on the subject anywhere. There are quite a few hotspots in our world today. Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, China, Syria, 
and Washington, D.C., just to mention a few. The ancient prophecies of the Bible, many written over 2,500 years ago, seem just about ready to shock the world. The Bible speaks to the times we're living in today. Scripture tells us that the nation of Israel is God's timepiece. When God restored them to their land in 1948, after some 1,900 years in exile, the prophetic clock began ticking at a faster pace. I'm sure you're familiar with the word Armageddon, the final battle we see described in the book of Revelation. Armageddon is a time in the future when Israel is surrounded by all the armies of the world and facing annihilation. But there's another famous battle that was discussed here today, the Battle of Gog and Magog, a life-changing encounter for Israel and her enemies. It could be even closer than we think as we see Russian troops massing on the Ukraine border, Iran threatening Israel at every turn, and Israel in turn threatening to destroy Iran's nuclear capabilities. The perfect storm is brewing. Mondo and Bill have created the most comprehensive study ever recorded on this soon coming battle. What nations are involved? Why do they attack Israel? Does the United States get involved in this battle? And how does this scenario fit into the book of Revelation and the battle of Armageddon? These three DVDs, Ezekiel 38, the coming Russian and Iranian invasion of the promised land are available to you for your gift of $30 or more to help support the worldwide television outreach of Prophecy Watchers. And as always, shipping is included anywhere in the USA with a free bonus DVD included as our way of saying thank you for your much appreciated support. Just call the toll-free number you see on your screen 24-7 to get your copy of the Ezekiel 38 study on three hour-long DVDs or visit us online at prophecywatchers.tv. Eight months ago, we began airing our program on the Daystar Television Network. Perhaps you're watching on Daystar today. This new worldwide audience inspired us to launch a new digital website where you can download Bill and Mondo's new Ezekiel DVD and hundreds of other DVDs and prophecy conference messages. Just visit prophecywatchers.com. You'll find access to all of our streaming services that eliminate the need and the high cost of international shipping. It's been a real blessing for our friends living abroad. Thanks for watching today. May God bless you and your family during this Christmas season. Bill, thanks for being with us today, and we hope you, you join us next time because we are going to have to spend some more time on this. We just covered um, chapter 38, and we want to really get into chapter 39. But we really want to remind everybody that, as Bill mentioned, this is the time where, for us, you know, our goal is to educate. Our goal is to remind people that Jesus came, he died on a cross to save sinners as our substitute. And for those who put their faith and trust in him, they can have a relationship with God the Father through the finished work of Jesus. And this is the time to do that. Prophecy is being fulfilled all around us. And we like to remind people as well to, to be watching and to be ready and use this as an opportunity to get to know the Lord and to share the message with those uh, in your family, friends, and in your circle. So thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletters. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.